Hey, this is K Bill from Soul Sweet Productions. Let's talk about how Remedy can control Scalar 2, which in turn can control your plugin instrument, all inside of Studio One. This little plugin is Remedy. Uh, I saw a YouTube video from 41 Fingers, which I will link his video below. He'll go into a little bit more detail about what Remedy is. Uh, but he was working in Cubase as his DAW, and we're in Studio One. And uh, I have both, I just prefer using Studio One. I'm in version four still. Um, I have not upgraded to version five. So Remedy. It's basically a MIDI sampler. If you've ever worked with Serato Sampler, it works much like that, only with MIDI files. You can bring your own in and it has 1700 royalty-free MIDI files that you can mess around with in various different genres. And if it's not, and if none of those are to your liking, you can go into your own or your own purchased uh, royalty-free uh, MIDI files and use it for that. And so we're basically going to go through the setup for using Remedy into Scalar 2 into a plugin instrument. Um, I'm just using this contact string ensembles from the Symphony series uh, to get a point across in this particular tutorial. So the settings for Studio One are a little bit different, and that's why I'm doing this video. So Inside of here, you want I want to turn internal sounds off. I don't want to hear it. I don't really like it. Um, but in here, this is the different part for Studio One. You need to turn on some channels. And that will make a difference when selecting um, one of your MIDI files, Bach JS 16 title here, um, because it will play all the notes. If you don't have that on, the sum channels, you won't hear all of the notes. So it'll only play some of them. And basically, we're going to go into uh, Scalar 2, which will be controlled by Remedy. Um, then go into your plugin instrument, which will be controlled by Scalar 2. OK, so you're going out of Remedy into Scalar 2, then into your plugin instrument. You want to make sure that you have all of your channels active. Um, so that you can get sound. And you want to make sure that you've selected one of the MIDI files. So now, when I play one key, you see how it loops, basically, with every note that I hit. Okay, so the reason that we're using Scalar I'm going to change the instrument in here. You can turn it to off, um, which will be just right here, or you can go down to whatever sound you like. I'm just putting an instrument that's similar to the one that I have in my string ensembles contact. And the reason that we're using Scalar 2 is so that we can change the key as we're playing in it. And also a little bonus tip, I'm going to show you another reason why we're using Scalar 2. But if you see, I'm going to play one note and it's going to play it in C major. Now let's say I want to change to C minor. Dorian. and so on, Lydian mode, okay? Um, so in here, um, you wanna go in and find what key you like. You can play around with it, find the key that you like. For this particular one, I'm going to go to G, Lydian, okay? And now it's playing off of that key inside of Scalar um, and it's controlling these different notes, but changing it to those keys. And now when I play a sequence of them, and that's all playing one note at a time. 
So if I come in here and record that, it's going to be uh, just one key. I'm just going to do. Okay, so now that that's recorded, I'm just going to fix the MIDI a little bit. And this is the result that we get. As you can see, every key that it hits plays one of the MIDI files in the pattern that they're in. So you could do multiple tracks of this. Uh, another good thing is that here inside of Scalar, uh, we can capture the MIDI so we can get all the individual notes. So down here you have your MIDI capture and we'll bring it back to the beginning. And as soon as we start play, you're gonna see the keys on the keyboard inside of Scalar 2 um, activating and it's gonna record those. See how the individual knows playing? So we'll stop that. So now we can add another instrument. Uh, I'm just going to add a string ensemble. So we basically have the same sounds, but it's showing that everything we just played into Scalar 2 is now individual notes. So if we solo this, all we're going to hear is those notes. And now it's the individual notes. It's no longer playing the instrument above. So I don't like these end notes and I'm just going to clear those out really quickly. And now we have all the notes uh, that were played into Scalar. Um, the good thing about that is that we can add individual instruments. So let's say we want to bring a bass in, a cello, a viola, and violin. And now we can copy this one track. Now this could be done with multiple instruments. You could do individual ones, however you'd like. But here, what I'm going to do it is I'm going to bring down from the string ensemble and mute that one. And now go in and for the basses, I just want the bass notes. So I'm gonna take this low one, anything above here, I'm going to delete any doubles that play above, I'm going to delete. And so now it'll just play these notes in the bass. We wanna make sure, or you wanna make sure on your plug-in instrument that it's playing the lowest notes. Uh, I'm just testing that on here real quick because I see them lined up and they will play. So now we just get this. All the inflection, I don't want that velocity so high. So now we can drag this down and edit the cellos. Um, we don't want all those lowest notes playing. And then we can get rid of the first double note in these that we were playing in the bass. So now the harmonic will be between those. Don't want that one, don't want that one. Any doubles from the high. So we don't want any notes playing together. And then all these lower notes we can bring up an octave. Um, two if you like, but now those two will play together. And again, you could do the same with the violas and the violins. Um, I'm 
not going to take out every note, but this is so the viola is playing a lot of the notes. So now the viola would play on top. We could have any of these notes. Um, I'm just doing it quickly for the tutorial. So let's say orchestra or symphony is not your style of music. You don't want to use it for that. And you want to start with something completely different. Well, having a different sound or it doesn't have to be for one genre of music just because it comes from um, a different genre. Um, so I'm going to bring in an Omnisphere instance. And mute that. Bring this in. Go into my. Going to go to a sound that I really like. Let's go with this one. Okay, so now if I pull this in, I can pull that MIDI pattern. I could get it off of Scalar as well here. Something completely different. You could change the tempo if you like to. Um, you could add some effects to it. Put it on halftime. Uh, generally, when you're in halftime, you like to Go up an octave. Change the notes. So you get different effects and so forth. And you're not limited to one genre of music, one style. You can change these notes around. It's just a good starting point for you to start producing your music. Um, you could also throw on another effect really quick. Um, this is a reverse effect that I have. It's a little delayed because of the effect. So you'd have to mess around with bouncing it or in your timeline. And there's just multiple different things that you could do with it. So again, to really quickly just review how you set this up inside of Studio One, if you have these uh, two main plugins. Again, we're going to have Remedy, Scalar 2, and whatever plugin you want. If you have an instance of a MIDI file set up in here, and you want to come out of Remedy into Scalar 2, which Scalar 2 would be controlled by Remedy, then your plugin instrument controlled by Scalar 2. Make sure all of the audio is active. So you can control it from there. Again, it doesn't have to be a string ensemble with this. They do have multiple different um, MIDI files that you can mess with that give you something completely different. So that just gives you a few different options to help you be more creative, come up with, if you have creator's block or you're just having trouble coming up with some ideas, uh, you work better off of other ideas. Uh, this is a great way to get started with it. Again, this is K-Bill from Soul Sweet Productions. So if any of this information was helpful to you, please hit that like button, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you know as soon as I upload another tutorial.